Uh, PID 3320, the Facilitating Learning Online Fundamentals, or Flow Fundamentals course, is the realization of the design that I had talked about in the in the design example. And um, the uh, structure of the format had uh, that I had worked out um, really did come to fruition in, in the way that it had been planned. And um, all the way along, um, I... I I kept on focusing on what the outcome is. What is the outcome of the main learning activities? You know, the introduction video, the, there's an outcome there, the, the creation of the community, the collaboration, uh, those sorts of things. And so uh, when, a, when a person lands on the course, they can see a very simple, clean structure. Um, there's a title, my, uh, my information. The first thing I want them to do is look at the video. The overview uh, video is there as well. The handbook is where you will find, you know, the full explanation for the course and the outcomes. Uh, and, and you know an example of what students need to be able to do the full details there's a pacings document which is also extremely important because it does provide a student the opportunity to take a look at options that they have in terms of doing what is minimum and then um, also going deeper so um, I, I use this notion of at minimum and then going deeper and I introduce that in the first module now you'll notice that th when, a, when a student first opens a course it's very clean not very cluttered. There's only a few things that need to be done. There's a link to the assignment, few very, very basic instructions, an announcement link. So um, by simply providing a very, very simple guided directed approach, it's easy to navigate your learner through where you need them to go and what you need them to do. Um, I use the accordion approach here in the sense that I can click on one little button and all these items open, or you can actually, you know, click on them one at a time. And, and the reason that we display the information all closed up is that you don't want to overwhelm your learner. So in the design, I want to keep things clean and, and as cluttered as possible. But even when you do open up all the modules, you'll notice that, again, I'm following a very, very simple procedure. I have uh, some, some videos. These are, you know, the introduction overview video. Um, and then um, going back, additional supporting information, um, and then the module activities. And as you move through, you'll see it follows the same type of a format, an overview, module activities, overview, module activities, overview, module activities. So it's, it's important to establish a pattern in the introduction to the course or the, the getting started or the hub or whatever you want to call this area. Um, and then in your first module, you set up a pattern, you establish the pattern and, and you establish a, a level of familiarity and provide consistency with that to help your students go through that perspective. Now, the design also lends itself to uh, uh, being student led. Um, this is a self-paced, self-directed course. Yes, there's a meeting, uh, there's an instructor meeting, uh, the instructor is available, I can meet with the students at whatever time, but because this course is self-paced and it is in, uh, student directed in terms of the time frame, um, everything that has been built has been done so in such a way to allow the student to take control of the learning. So it is learner centered and and my role as the instructor is more of the coach, the facilitator, the guide on the side. Um, and I come in when when it's necessary. Um, my overview videos play the role of coach and, and facilitator and, and guide. And then once I set the students up on the right type of a process, then they can go and implement the ideas. So this that minimum notion is something that I explain as well. I also caution people to not get too uh, worked up about you know direct instruction because this course is self-directed and it's outcomes based and a lot of people aren't comfortable with outcomes based so I have to actually provide an explanation for that so every video every piece that I add to the course um, serves a purpose you know the obviously the overview video gives a sense provides a hook and a context for what's going on the at minimum talks about the design as well the training trap talks about exploration experimentation and also learning off of each other and not trying to do everything in total isolation, but to collaborate. Um, and then the introduction forums, um, which is uh, the place where students aggregate and communicate, are set up in such a way that um, all activities in this particular model are channeled through the introductory forum. And there are requirements in terms of students introducing themselves and sharing information, 
um, and the instructions for the forum are obviously located in the inter introduction forum. The prompts are there, everything's in place, and then you can see the level of activity. So all the components, right from the starting point to um, you know everything that you see in this first module has a purpose. And um, initially there was a lot more information. And a lot of this information that I uh, made available, I moved down into the resources section. So we've got a very, very healthy resources section with an enormous amount of information, lots of information. So you're, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple links here, a lot of information, the transcripts. Um, why not include all this up in the first module? Because it's overwhelming. You don't do that, right? The information here is provided to enable the learner to, at minimum, be able to do the things that we want them to be able to do, to create that video, to create that sense of community, to start their collaborations, to start the communication, and to, you know, everything that they need to do is available here in the Getting Started area. Um, the how to use my media and uh, in Kaltura tip was added at a later date because students ran into a little bit of an issue with Kaltura. Um, there's a media gallery <laughs> and there's also a uh, my media which is off of your profile and a lot of people if they've never used Kaltura get uh, don't realize where they need to go and then posting videos into, into the forums finding that unique little embed code can be challenging. So we added this um, short little video to provide a context for those sorts of things. So in the initial design and the initial implementation, I didn't have it. But after a bit of use and a bit of testing, I added that in. And so that's where usability testing comes into play. And um, if you think of some of the other comments I had made that um, it usually takes several iterations of my course to hit the point where I think I've got that flow. And you have to see how things are going to work and what needs to be added and sometimes what needs to be taken away. Um, I added in an introduction chat um, because one, uh, a few students asked for it. It's something that isn't working very well. Uh, it's not well implemented in Moodle and very few people are using it and I'm considering dropping it out. I actually had it in the second synchronous module but I took that out. So looking at this first module, this module sets a precedent for the rest of the modules. And again, you've got the videos, you've got the actual assignment instructions, you've got the key information that is necessary. You've got some tips and uh, instruction uh, to help in terms of the feedback and communication, collaboration in the forums, um, some uh, some additional collaboration tips, the forum, and then you know some key ideas in terms of tagging and searching. And then we added a pay it forward uh, forum where students who are completing the course can actually um, post their pay it forward videos uh, for new students to come in. So again, that was added a little bit later. Uh, we initially had it at the bottom, but we decided that it'd be better to have students who are just coming in to see that. That's the intention of the Pay It Forward video. So this, this entire design process um, is structured in such a way to lead the learner through the things that they need to do. So just by placing the things in the position that they are, we are linear people. We follow things in somewhat of an order. I don't order things one, two, three, but at the same time, I use the design. And by structuring these things uh, through in a similar fashion, again, when you, I encourage students to look at the entire course once it's up, you'll see it, every module follows the same fashion. Very simple, very effective, very quick. So rather than having, you know, um, this video displayed on the page, I do ask a student to click on it simply to keep it clean, to keep it less cluttered. It makes it easier for a learner to be able to um, move through the course um, by just seeing these links and then doing the things that they need to do. It doesn't overwhelm them. So there, there's one more key element to the design that I need to talk about. Um, and I have always advocated that there isn't anything I'll ask my learner to do that I won't do myself. So throughout the course, I provide the initial examples of all the activities. So, um, you know, there there is a, a in a self-directed course, you have to have a certain amount of synchronous collaboration. So the first meeting is an example of that synchronous collaboration. And uh, we've had some question and answer meetings and some students have schedule additional meetings to talk about different things. But that first meeting is a primary example of collaboration. Now, I have met with many students uh, individually, and so that's another example of synchronous collaboration. So I, I would suggest that there probably would be uh, 25 to maybe maybe a third of the course is synchronous collaboration. And then the rest of the course would be asynchronous structure. And then giving students the, the opportunity to um, 
you know, do things based on um, effective modeling. Now, the modeling happens by myself and by um, classmates. So in, in the introduction forums, uh, one of the most important things is that students are asked to post information and collaborate with two or three or four others and then share and collaborate. And so these forums become a very lively, wonderful place where collaboration takes place and it can be extremely effective. So uh, it's really important that you model the activities and you can guide and direct the level of engagement by the activities that you have uh, structured. So whenever you're designing an online course, it's extremely important to understand what platform you are working in. in. At VCC, we happen to be using Moodle. At other institutions, I've used Blackboard, Desire to Learn. Um, I've used Canvas and, and yet other institutions. There's a variety of different tools that are available. It's important that you understand the different tools that um, are unique to your institution. Um, within, within the Moodle infrastructure, we also have a Kaltura infrastructure. And that is part of um, uh, a unique aspect of this particular course. We have an at minimum component where um, uh, we encourage students at minimum to use Kaltura Capture. Now, students were given the option of doing uh, using other tools to go above that. But at minimum, if you only have the tools that are available to you in this course, you could do the minimum tasks. And so all the videos, most of what I did is uploaded directly into Kaltura, and then it's made accessible through embedding um, and through my media. And, and it, so I'm using the tools within the course itself. And that is extremely important that that you are able to you know, do those sorts of things. Um, you want to model the use of the technology and tools so that students can see that you know, um, these, are, these are tasks that you know, can be used as well. Because we're using all the native tools built into the learning management system, um, wherever possible, we pointed to some key tips, for example, how to use Kaltura in my media, uh, some engagement tips, a variety of different things that point to different activities that can be helpful. Um, a lot of these uh, are additional support ideas were offered in the resources section as well. Uh, there's a conversation about e uh, forwarding of emails and writing of other things. So you need to acknowledge what are the unique idiosyncrasies of the system that you're in. And if there are some challenges or potentially uh, frustrating points, um, you can address those issues immediately, but do so in a way that um, also doesn't cause the learner to become completely dependent upon you. You want to still provide direction and guidance as a facilitator and have the students being willing to explore. You've got to find that balance between explicitly prescribing every single activity, because if you go down that route, well, then it then your course becomes instructor-led. Gives the student the freedom to choose the things that they want to do, choose the authentic learning opportunities, the freedom to find their voice, uh, the freedom to do a lot of different things. You have to guide and direct and describe as opposed to prescribe. So you've got to find that balance. Now, at some, at some point, if Kaltura is challenging to use, you have to explain why it's challenging to use and, and provide a solution. So you've got to find that balance, and that will come with some testing. And that's the next stage in the process is usability testing. After you've got these ideas laid out, um, after you've, got, uh, you've explored how the module is working, have another set of eyes go through it. That's where the usability testing came in. I initially had this whole column here on the right side filled with a variety of other links. And after having a few people take a look at it, um, most people found that that side column was rather confusing. Um, and because I didn't put everything there, there was only a few things. The question was why? Why are these things more important than other things? And so um, the general consensus through my usability testing was to eliminate the, that side column and just keep it lean and clean. Um, and it's less confusing. Um, and the usability testing also confirmed that these um, this initial view was extremely important and it didn't overload the uh, uh, learner. So the usability testing phase, which is the next phase in your process, is going to help you to see how effective your your overview or introduction area is and how effective your design of your first module is when you take your learner through um, this uh, learning experience in, in their first module. So uh, this is an example of uh, the realization of an instructional design plan and um, I look forward to uh, seeing, seeing examples of what you've done and what you're going to be sharing with your colleagues uh, in the forums.